<clears throat> what's going on guys plastic beach back here <clears throat> with another deck profile so i took uh the beach trooper deck to locals this weekend and i went i went to two locals on saturday and one local on sunday uh the one on saturday i went so the first one on saturday i went x1 i lost to drytron but i beat a drytron and then in another uh like random deck i didn't like some dude who didn't know how to play the game very well um so that was only three rounds um and then I got third in that one, but it was only like 10 people. Um, and then the one after that, I think I got third again, and I only I lost one, drew one. My loss was, I think against Dinos. Um, I misplayed a lot, but the, and there was only four rounds there. And then today we had a 20 person local with five rounds and I got second. I went X1 again, I lost to Shadal Dino. Uh, I just didn't know he was playing the Shadals, and I chose to go first when I should have chosen to go second. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I took the same deck list to all three locals, so I thought I would show it off and show you what I've been uh, playing with recently. Um, I think this deck is decent right now. I think it's going to get better with uh, the level 8, I think, that comes out in Burst of Destiny that lets you shuffle 3 to summon it. Because you can end on um, Cicada King, that guy, uh, Dump Scary Moth with Resonance, and um, Atlas. So that you can negate the level 8 on the end phase to boost your guys up by 1,000 with Cicada King. And then summon back the Scary Moth on your end phase. Um, so it's just like a window. Um, yeah, but other than that, I'll just talk about the cards as I go through them. Okay, so for matchups today, uh, today I went X1, I won against, I can see the guy's face, I just can't remember what he was playing, it'll come back to me, but it was, it wasn't meta. Um, and then I lost against uh, the Shadal Dino, and then I think I, uh, I can't really remember what, oh, Sky Striker, and the other matchup was uh, Dino's. Um, yeah, and I can't remember what else, but, so I played three scout buggy. I was playing two for a while, but I just think three is better, just, you know, starter. Or it's, I mean, I wouldn't call any of these cards starters, but they get you another body on board to get the armor horn, which lets you extend uh, three of him because he chain blocks. He, he's really good. He chain blocks your buggy and your uh, sting. And then two of these, you never need more. But you definitely need two at least, um, because you're summoning one, and then usually, and sometimes you add one, and you just want to have them in deck to be able to continue summoning it. And then one of the spell and one of the trap, which I think this lineup's pretty standard for the B trooper cards. And then three sting the poison, three pin, and then one arbalest and one uh, twin bow. Uh, Arbalest is honestly underrated. I think it, I, it just keeps you in the game. It brings you back into the game whenever you're low because it doesn't negate uh, Sting's effect uh, whenever you uh, summon. So you, it's an instant like plus two, um, and then you can bring back Goki Pole, Scout Buggy, and it doesn't negate any of their effects. So uh, there's an argument to run two and two of these guys, but I really wanted this just to be able to burn in time just in case, and then I don't want this because I do run uh, access code and stuff, so I don't ever want to be locked out of that. And then for the resonance, uh, resonance engine, three insect, one gogi pole, one needle, and one doom dozer. So I've been playing with the needle recently. I didn't like it, just like conceptually in the beginning, but it is really good, um, and then I'll throw this in, especially with the kaiju. If you give your opponent the kaiju, you can uh, pop it. So essentially just clears their board. Um, and then you can OTK and just, just to know, it's a good thing to know that uh, uh, Atlas plus Doomdozer plus uh, Sting Lancer is 8,200. So a lot, of t a lot of times, like more than you would think, I kaijued someone or I searched it off resonance or something, kaijued them and then killer needled the kaiju. And they were left with an open board and that was my, and I just OTK with those three cards. But obviously, Resonance is nuts, and the Super is sick. But yeah, Resonance is what makes this deck go, and I think 
with the new cards, they're definitely, you're definitely going to be able to abuse resonance more. And then I just played the one retaliating C. Um, no need for more. I played two more on the side for like uh, anything like Invoked or Drytron or something like that. Um, it's really good. It's a really good card and it floats into your, uh, to your resonance for your follow up. So it's a really good card. Um, and then hand traps, I played three Nibiru, three Imperm, two Ash Blossom, and one Valor. So I didn't play three Ash. I just I had to cut something. I couldn't find the room. And plus, I'm playing like the Kaiju, so it's kind of a going second card. I'm playing something else. It's essentially a going second card. I can show you in a second. But these are all also just cross out targets. Um, I felt Nibiru. I really wanted something impactful, like high impact. I can summon. You just gotta remember that you can't use this under whenever you have Atlas on the field. If you go first and you draw Nib, you can't summon it because you can only summon insects. Um, I came up a couple times, so Nibiru might not be like optimal, but it's definitely needed at least at one to stop it with cross out because you literally have no other way to stop Nibiru. Um, a lot of people in like the B Trooper Facebook group say that Nibiru doesn't matter because you can just play through, but. It's so hard to play through. I've been testing this deck a lot, a lot, a lot on like DN and stuff. I've been, um, or DB, DB. Um, I've been playing a lot of DB lately and I've been taking, I've been playing as much as I can with this deck at locals. Um, and I just think that you need the, you need to stop Nibiru because yeah, you can continue to do stuff, but you don't do anything like that matters. Uh, like you'll end on, you won't end on the counter trap because the best place to, to nib is, and if they know what the deck does, they're going to nib um, whenever you discard off Pico Flana targeting your armor horn so you can't equip. Um, and, like, there's nothing you can do there. So so I played the cross outs, and then I played one TTT and one called by the grave for hand traps. Um, TTT was more or less for uh, cross out to cross out TTT because a lot of decks are only out to Atlas, uh, like road decks and stuff. The only out to Atlas is either attacking over it or TTTing you uh, whenever you activate Sting's effect. After you activate Sting's effect to negate one of their monsters. Um, so cross adding TTT is pretty good. I wouldn't say, uh, like, the deck can run through, like, Ash and stuff. So cross out's really nice in this deck because, like, your hands are so situational to where sometimes if they imperm your armor horn then it just kills your turn. Sometimes if they imprim your, or ash your uh, scout buggy or sting, then you just end your turn. So this is nice for that. But a lot of times, if they ash, if you have enough extenders, ashing uh, the scout buggy doesn't matter, imperming the, the armor horn doesn't matter. I mean, sometimes I don't even use it to say the armor horn's effect a normal summon, you know? I just bring it back off of uh, itself in the graveyard, which is... So, like, in negating it just doesn't matter. And in those situations, you just hold, 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 cross out, hold, hold. And don't even set it on the on the end, on your main phase. Don't even set it. Because, like, if they in, if they nib you on the end of your main phase, then you have nothing. You have nothing to, like, negate it with. Your counter trap is dead. Um, so, yeah, I think cross out's definitely needed in this deck. But a lot of people don't play it, so. And then extra deck. Three of this guy, definitely needed. Three of this guy, always, always found myself. I was playing two of this, but I always, always found myself needing a third. Um, and then same with this, I need a second. I, I, I really want to play a second, but I just don't have one, or I definitely would, I would cut something for it. Because um, these cards, you're just constantly going into these, Pico shuffling back to recycle. Um, it's just crazy. These are like your combo enablers. And like just just be, being able to make an extra papillion if I had a second after I go through the first one on the first turn because you know you're ending on this card and Atlas to bring back Sting. Um, but just being able to have a second to go into access code easier would just be so would be so much better because like if you have this card up and you have an, another insect or something you can't make needle fiber you can't make unicorn or whatever because you have to go into insects so you want to be able to go into this and then take the other insect you have. Um, and make access code a lot of a lot of times and then for the other uh, insect cards one cicada king and then two atlas i never needed more of either of those cards cicada king is pretty good um and then for other like utility cards i played the Celine package with access code 
Um, it won me a couple games actually. So with Sting, you can just make this with Sting and any other monster as long as you're not locked into insects. And then I played a unicorn, helped out a lot. And then one Zeus, which I never made and never have made. So that's why I would probably cut for the second Papillion was the Zeus. But in theory, you can go like Cicada King and if I had a Downard, you can go to Downard and Zeus, but um, it doesn't come up that often. It's just really good against trap decks because like Eldrick is by far your worst matchup. Uh, Eldrick is by far the worst matchup first because they have a bunch of traps and you have no way to remove traps besides like your side deck. And then second, because uh, Eldrick, if they bring back Eldrick off its own effect, then it's 3,500 and can run over your boss monster. So it's pretty much just an abysmal matchup. Um, but for the side, uh, three drill, two retail, and one more kaiju. Um, it's pretty cool to be able to, if you like open one of the kaijus, you can kaiju your opponent, then resonance search the other, and then special summon the kaiju that you uh, searched to your side of the field as another insect extender just to attack. Um, that's pretty good, retaliating sees nuts. And I thought drill was just, it's, it's really good against Drytron. There's a lot of Drytron players playing, still playing Cyber Emergency because, uh, I mean, obviously they just need the consistency to get to a, a two Drytrons. Um, so they have to concede to drill, or concede to, concede to people just maining or playing drill against them, um, which I'm, I'm fine with. I'll, I'll, I'll play the drills. And then three Twin Twister, one uh, Duster. God, I hate this glare, but there's nothing really I can do about it. And then two Evenlies, four back row heavy decks. Um, I was playing a third Evenly, but I wanted to cut, I cut one for three rivalry just for going first. I wanted something going first um, instead of just a bunch of going second cards and just trying to go combo. At least this can like lock you out. I actually did like top deck this off of Pico and then gave my opponent the Kaiju and then on their standby phase activated this card and they just passed. So it's pretty good. It locks out a lot of decks. Um, yeah, I think the deck is, is decent right now. I would call it like a, a insect salamon grade or like a toolboxy insect deck because you can just search like all your outs to any problem card. Like you can search a kaiju. Um, Doomdozer gets over a lot of stuff. Uh, Retaliating C is just utility. Um, so yeah, on that front, um, with the new support, I know because I know people in the comments are gonna ask about the new support. I what my thoughts on it are. I would just say that I think the level eight or whatever the one that shuffles three to, to uh, summon itself from the Banished. I think that card's pretty good. Um, I don't know. I don't think any of the other cards are pretty good. I mean, the Azteca P card is okay, but it's not searchable off, like, any of your cards because no no card searches a B Trooper monster. Um, only B Trooper spells and traps for the Stuart Sting Lancer. So, I don't know. I don't even know if you would even play it. I mean, it's searchable off Goki Paul, I guess, but... So is Aztecapede, and like, what, why are you playing that over Aztecapede? Um, but, yeah, I would just say, like, the level 8's good just for the Scary Moth stuff. You can uh, consistently make Scary Moth on your inboard now, which is going to be oppressive, in my opinion. Um, yeah, and just like all my videos, I'm going to show off a couple cool cards from my collection. So first off, I have an Ulti Korean First Ed Alu card. And this is funny enough, there's a funny story behind this. It was my very first card I ever bought online, but it was accidental. So back whenever I first started playing, I, was, I first started playing like like buying cards online, um, like right after Gear, Gear Gear format and like starting a hat format. Um, so I tried to buy a 101 Honor Arc and paid like 20 bucks to get it. And it was like my first like big purchase of a car. I know like $20 is crazy, but... Was, I was like 14, 15, so it was my very first purchase of a card. And instead, it, I got sent this card. <laughs> so you can imagine how a little upset I was because it's not even playable because it's Korean. Um, but I've kept it ever since then as like a little memento. It's always been in the front of my binder. So if you know me in real life, you'll probably have seen this card <laughs> just chilling in my binder every time. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm probably always going to keep this card. And then I picked this up this weekend. The first Ed Ultra Exodia Necros from DCR. In very, very nice condition, in my opinion. It goes for about 200 on TCG Player, but I haven't looked at the solds. I just looked at, like, what people have it priced at.
Press the back. And then there's the front. I think it looks pretty slick. And it's first dead, so pretty nasty pickup. Um, but yeah, just comment down below what you think about the B Trooper deck, what you think about the support. Um, I tried to do a combo video, but it didn't get it a lot of views, so I'm just probably not going to do another combo video. But there are a lot of combos that I figured out and a lot of, like, just situation, like situational stuff. Like, for instance, if they have window up, you can, and you have, uh, maybe you have, like, another insect on board, you can summon Arbalest. Uh, don't use the effect. Crash into um, window. Summon Sting, Sting Effect, Attribute the Insect to Negate Window, and then you have full combo after that. Um, obviously, search off Sting too, but um, stuff like that, or just like being able to just crash resonance, uh, search stuff. Um, like if you play Mothman, Mothman is like an out to window because you can just uh, reveal it, they can't negate it because you can just reveal it again and then cra uh, hit over window, a two amount window or something. Um, but just stuff like that. Like, there's a bunch of little interactions that people should know with the deck. Um, that'll make you make your gameplay step up a lot. Um, and I think this deck is very, very unexplored currently. I know like a lot of big YouTubers are talking about it, but I, I, I think people actually just need to play it and, uh, uh, you know, figure out sequ sequential stuff. So, um, but yeah, that's it for the video and uh, make sure you subscribe. Have a good day.